Hello, my name is Lydia Dietz, and I'll be processing you for today, or tonight, or this afternoon. It was depending on whatever day you died on, or at what time you died at. Um, so, my first question to you is, do you have your handbook for the recently deceased? You don't? Have you contacted your caseworker, Juno? You haven't. Have you dealt with any of the legal ramifications of your death, basically? Well, that's what happens to him when he dies, that's what happens to her when she dies, and that's what happens to them when they die. It's all very personal. Had I known that the process for dying would have been so lengthy and, you know, stressful, I wouldn't have had my little accident. Um, but, yeah, unfortunately the process is quite lengthy and it is quite, um, strenuous. So, we'll be able to work through this together. Um, I do have a couple of friends who are, who were also in the same situation that you're in right now, but, so I can, um, sympathize with your, um, being blindsided by everything that's going on in the afterlife. But, because you are unprepared, I'm going to be taking down some of your information so that way we can get the process going so that way Juno can have you on file. I'm sure she already has you noted down as people who are recently deceased considering how everyone who dies is out in the local newspaper and she's the one who directs it. But, and she's also, yeah, she's also a lawyer and she manages the journalism department within the um, underworld facility. But, um, she would like to be, I'm assuming she would like to get a little more information on upon you, and I'm actually not assuming, she does want more information upon you, so. Give me one moment to find a pen, and the first thing I'm going to be asking you is, what was the cause of your death, if you know? Okay. That's interesting. And did you have a will chalked up? Did you have any sort of um, life savings put away for a loved one, perhaps even a dog, considering how that is um, a practice we see a lot, especially among the older women? And were you wealthy? Okay. And did you have any children by chance? Okay. And do, do you know whether or not they conducted a funeral for you? Your loved ones? If you had any? information has been collected. Um, now that we have that down, actually give me one moment. I still have one more question to ask you. The last question I have to ask you is, what is your current and permanent home address? And is that a road, or a street, or an avenue? Okay. A zip code? Excellent, thank you. Now, how did I die? Well, no, I don't mind you asking me, it's perfectly alright. Um, people usually are often curious as to how, um, you know, I died. Um, 
I don't know why, but they usually take a fancy to knowing how I personally, you know. But the way I died was simply that um, one night I was watching an episode of Game of Thrones and I, it was the episode, I'm not sure if you watched it, but it was the episode where they had the red wedding and when I ended up seeing that, I just felt completely suicidal. I ended up doing exactly what everyone else felt like doing in their hearts and I ended up passing away. Yeah, I can't really handle um, authors killing off my favorite, you know, characters. I was almost ready to do it again when Sherlock fell off of the Rickenbach um, building for his Rickenbach fall in the BBC Sherlock, um, you know, series. But then I realized that I was already dead and I can't re-kill myself over a character, so that disappointed me. However, the good side is, and the excellent thing about being here, is that when a character dies in a TV show, even though it's sad because you're so programmed to think, oh, they died, you know, that's so sad, but when you really start to rewire your brain into accepting the fact that that you can pretend they're actually just coming down to get processed by me, it becomes a very jovial experience because it's like, wow, even though, and that's exactly what kind of struck my mind when I ended up seeing Sherlock, you know, Sherlock's tombstone is that I was like, oh, I actually have a chance at seeing this gentleman, even though he's a, he was a fictitious character, which means I have no chance, but still I can have a chance of seeing this character if the situation were actually plausible where he was real. So I'm quite happy about that. Um, that little clause, I guess of being a fangirl in the afterlife. It's quite nice. But anyways, to move on with your um, being processed, I'm going to be taking your photo because you are going to be needing an ID down here. If we end up seeing someone who's alive down here um, or somehow manages to, uh, to, you know, sneak in to the afterlife, we have to kill them because, you know, people can't know that there's an afterlife, otherwise, they just start losing their mind, people start running amok, they just start, I don't know, the living is just, they're just ridiculous. I'm actually ashamed that I was ever alive in the first place, but the good thing is that I'm no longer there, so I'm now in the land of the dead, which is actually a pretty fun place to be, but if you'll keep still, I'm going to be taking your photo now, okay? Excellent. Smile if you want to. Don't smile if you don't want to. Just make sure that you will be able to live with this photo for the rest of your eternity. Let me just get a couple of them. I just want to make sure that you get a good, decent photo. Once more, you are going to have to live with this ID for the rest of your eternity. You should see mine and see how terrible it is. I even had those little pointy bangs from the 90s. It's gross. Okay. I'm going to hook this up to my film processor. Here we go. Okay. I'll be developing those photos as you talk to your caseworker, Juno, who's going to be helping you along with the process of, you know, keeping legal within this, um, afterlife community. Yes, um, the good thing is that your green card into the afterlife is basically your date of death certificate, which I'm assuming you have. 
if you don't have it, Juno will have it. Um, once more, Juno is basically in charge of everything when it comes to the afterlife. It's actually quite amazing how well she does her job for how much, how many responsibilities she has to hold down. But um, she'll basically be taking care of you and every single need you have, you just have to cooperate with her. And I have to give you fair warning that she is a bit temperamental, but once more, she's in charge of everything and does an excellent job. So be understanding of that fact because she is working for you. Um, what else? I'm trying to see if I can advise you the best I can before you go in, but I think we basically covered all the, um, all the, all the bases, basically. So, just take a seat, um, there's a number right there, pick it out, that'll be the number you get called up on, and then once you get called, then Juno, your caseworker, will be getting in touch with you.